Oregon's Department of Transportation, also known as ODOT, is quickly moving to bring tolls to our state, mainly in the greater Portland area. The first place you're going to see them is this stretch of Interstate 205. I used my highlighter here to put that section in yellow so that you can see it. On the right side is the Abernathy Bridge that crosses the Willamette River. Below that is Oregon City. Just above 205 is West Lynn. And then looking to the far left, the tolling section would end around Stafford Road. Okay, there's going to be two tolling stations along this section. There'll be one at the Abernathy Bridge where that one circle is and the other on the Tualatin Bridge. The peak rush hour cost will likely be about $2.20 to cross each bridge each way and it will be lower at other times. Now, ODOT told me that the money raised will pay for a billion dollar project there of adding a lane each way to the Abernathy Bridge and all along that highlighted section we just showed you where there's now only two lanes, they're going to make it three. The money will also pay for earthquake upgrades at nine bridges along I-205 and then later the tolls will be used for maintenance and to help ODOT's future budget. And by the way, this is the first of two big projects on 205 and I-5. We'll get to the other one in a bit. You had a lot to say about tolling in general. And instead of just highlighting some of your comments here, I also packaged them up and then sent them off to ODOT today, which was good, and they responded. So we're going to show your question and then ODOT's answer. Are you ready? Good. Here we go. Sarah wrote in to say, hey, Pat. If tolls are being charged freeway on freeways, won't people drive through nearby neighborhoods? That sounds terrible. I live in Irvington near I-5 and it concerns me a lot. I think a lot of people are concerned about that. Here's the response from ODOT. Unfortunately, neighborhood streets are already experiencing more congestion as drivers divert to local roads to avoid highway traffic jams. ODOT is working to identify toll rates that minimize congestion and rerouting to local streets, maximize travel benefits for toll payers and local street users. And then they continue. And generate revenue for infrastructure improvements. Too low of a toll doesn't address traffic congestion, but too high of a toll leads to negative rerouting to other streets. Therefore, fewer people gain benefits. And then ODOT went on to say that they're working with local jurisdictions to find solutions to people bailing off the freeway to avoid the tolls. So, yes, they're aware that could be a big problem, but no, it doesn't sound like there are any solid answers yes. Here's Annie's question. Any worries about the cost of the tolls? Writing, no, no, and a resounding no! Find other ways to raise revenue, support better transit, for instance, but no tolls! It's a horrid burden on modest income people. Judy agrees. She wrote in saying, these ideas are nuts. Sorry, but we already pay high taxes in Oregon for everything. Will there be any state deductions given to people who pay a certain amount in tolls just to get to work and back? Not everyone can take bus or transit. Well, here's ODOT's response. Currently, commitments to exemptions and discounts include one, exemptions for transit vehicles, and two, discounts or credits for people experiencing low incomes. Other vehicle and or user types have not been specified for exemptions or discounts. The statewide toll rulemaking advisory committee will be discussing this topic and making a recommendation to ODOT in late 2023 on additional exemptions or discounts appropriate for the toll program. Now that last part might sound a little bit like mumbo jumbo to you. It sure did to me. Here's a translation. If you're not public transit or low income, no, you're not getting a discount. At the same time, there is a rulemaking group that might consider other discounts, but not until late next year. All right, here's another comment. This one from Aaron. I'm wondering what effect these tolls will have on bringing workers to downtown Portland. I'd continue to work from home nonstop to avoid that extra commute cost on top of gas that's already a steep budget item. And she goes on to say, I can't fathom how Portland would not die a slow death when getting there becomes so costly. Here's ODOT's response to that. No, this is a regional toll program. Our traffic delays cost our economy $1.2 million per day, and they mean right now. For the state to continue to be competitive, we need to improve the flow of goods to and from the market, and right now our goods are getting stuck. ODOT adds, our traffic is hurting our economy and impacting the livability in this region. Tolls will help reduce traffic jams and provide more predictable trips to help us get to jobs, medical appointments, and where we need to go. I have to say that was kind of an interesting answer. I thought from the first, it was the very first pivot that we got on these ODOT questions. Did you catch it there? The question was about tolling impact on downtown Portland, but the answer didn't even mention downtown Portland. It was focused on the impact of congestion in the entire region. 
Now, not all the responses we got last night were negative. In fact, here's a voicemail we got from Tim, who lives in Clackamas County. I understand the concerns, and uh, I am also concerned about it myself. However, uh, my question is, is, okay, no tolls. How are you going to pay for the expansion, which we all agree we need? How are we going to pay for the upgrade, upkeep of the roads, which we all agree we need? As more electric vehicles come online, the gas tax um, revenue that's generated will go down. So my question is, yes, what are the alternatives that you want to come up with? Well, that's an excellent point, Tim. And by the way, Carl shares your point of view. Carl wrote in to say, people in the Pacific Northwest love the access we have to so many things, but no one wants to pay for it. They also do not want to pay for sales tax of any kind, leaving tens of millions of visitor money on the table uncollected. As a former native of the San Francisco Bay Area, we had several bridges to cross and tolls were a way of life, as were sales taxes. In Southern California, private toll roads were added so some could avoid the heaviest traffic. Either we step up and pay what we use or we will eventually lose it. So there's that. Now, some of you are comfortable with the tolls and see them as a necessary part of keeping our transportation system modern and moving. I get that. At the same time, several of you also asked why tolls are needed when Congress just passed a massive infrastructure bill. Isn't that paying for roads and bridges here? After all, Oregon is getting $4.5 billion from that over the next five years. Chad wants to know, how does the federal infrastructure bill affect highway and bridge construction? With the amount of funds from that resource, how can the legislature justify the implementation of tolling in Oregon on any project, including the Interstate I-5 bridge? Well, here's ODOT's answer. With the federal infrastructure package, ODOT is investing in projects across Oregon, not just the Portland metro region. We're using the federal package for safety improvements, maintenance and preservation of roadways, sustainable transportation, and also giving money to local governments to use and invest as they see best. And then, Really, they cut to the chase. The federal package is aimed at helping all Oregonians across the state. It would not be sufficient to cover needed improvements in Portland. The toll revenue will be necessary, even with federal funding. So that is that. Thanks for your great questions. Also, thanks to Mandy Putney at ODOT for answering them. And more information that we all get, I really believe this, the more we can get, the more we're going to understand and we're going to kind of be at peace with what's going on as we build more knowledge and context. Also, I started out by talking about ODOT's plans for tolling on 205 around Oregon City, but they also plan to toll other sections of 205 and also sections of I-5. Those details are not out yet. None of this will happen for about two years. And if Dean sure gets his way, it may not happen at all. Now, Dean lives in West Lynn, and he's one of the leaders of a petition to force a vote on tolling for each area where ODOT wants to put in tolls. The petition requires that uh, there is a vote of the citizens uh, of the counties within 15 miles around where a toll is instantiated. The thinking there is that this is not just a Clackamas County issue, this is a Multnomah, and this is um, uh, uh, a Washington County issue uh, in, in for I-205 and for I-5. If they were to put a toll down by, um, you know, the, the pass down near Ashland, you know, that down, uh, down by the Siskiyous, uh, then those counties down there would vote on that. So it's a regional vote um, that uh, is required before any tolling is instantiated. That's Dean Schur. He's gathering signatures now. His group needs about 200,000, they figure, by June of 2024, which he said seems like a long ways off, but that means he needs to get about 10,000 a month between now and then. That would put it up for a statewide vote and we'd all get a chance to say yes or no. Signatures cannot be done digitally, by the way. You have to actually sign the paper with a pen. So he said you can go to his website, votebeforetolls.org, and you can download a signature sheet and then send it to him if you want. Or you could also wait till spring or summer when they begin a big push and they'll be out on the streets. He said the petition has already passed some legal challenges, by the way. We've already had this uh, looked at by the state, Oregon State Supreme Court, because there were some objectors during that process. It passed very cleanly, no wording changes, no nothing. So we're very confident that the initiative is solid. Um, now, we, now we're on the march to get those signatures. If that initiative passes, it would not ban the tolls outright, but it would require votes for each tolling area. And if voters say no in that area, then ODOT would need to change the plan and try again. 
just so you know, we're not promoting the petition, but it is out there and we're going to keep an eye on it and let you know how things go. So that was a whole lot about tolling and transportation. But what do you think about all this? Do you agree with ODOT's answers to those questions? What do you think about the petition idea? Let us know, will you? Send an email to thestory at kgw.com or call and leave a voicemail 503-226-5090.